Would you like to get started in cloud computing? Here's how you do it. This one's um, for folks out there trying to break into cloud computing, which which be, I have a, a large part of the audience is that. I get most of the requests that I get uh, lately is, well, tell me how I break into this profession. What do I need to do uh, to become a cloud engineer, a cloud architect, uh, a FinOps specialist? Uh, how do I get into that career goal? And whether you're in an existing career path, you want to move into or pivot into cloud computing, or you're just starting out in your career, uh, just getting out of college, just getting out of high school, cloud computing is a great opportunity for a lot of people. It pays well, it's fun, it's very agile, uh, it's very changing. And, and so if you like that kind of environment, you're interested in continuously learning, and cloud computing may be the field for you. But how do you break into it? Well, first, you kind of have to ask yourself, do you have a passion for this or not? Do you want to be a cloud professional or not? And some people, by the way, are working in cloud computing these days that don't really like it. Like it, I would say maybe not, they li they like it enough to go to work, but they're in it for the pay. And I think that's perfectly fine if you're finding that's that's an option that's good for you. But you know, this is obviously something you're going to do better at if you're excited about it. You have a passion for this career path. If you're excited to learn about this technology, people are going to perceive that during interviews. They're going to perceive that in working with you. And that's going to be a leg up in you becoming a very successful professional on the cloud computing career path. Well, the first thing you need to do is to pick a path. And um, there are two major paths in cloud computing, uh, engineer and architect. And I'll explain, I'll explain the differences. Now, engineering is anybody that's doing something hands-on, software engineer, uh, security engineer, things like that. They're the ones who are actually getting things done. They're setting up the systems. They're setting up the infrastructure. They're setting up the security models. They're doing things. And so the hands-on, cloud-specific, product-specific you know, kind of people out there that really kind of make things happen. And this makes up the majority of uh, cloud jobs that are out there. We need lots of good engineers to deal like a security engineer, and development engineer, engineer, database engineer, governance engineer, infrastructure engineer, AI engineer, operations engineer, and a bunch of others out there, people who put their hands on the technology and make it work. And so this is probably, uh, say, five to one ratio between uh, folks who have an engineering type of job versus uh, one that have the uh, architect kind of job. So if you're looking for an entry-level position where there's lots of opportunities, you're looking to get a tactical certification and step right into a position, this is normally going to be your shortest path of doing that. It's going to take a lot more time to become an architect, but engineer is always something you could learn through a certification. And if you find an employer that's willing to accept you and give you a chance, give you that first position based on the fact you only have that certification and don't have a lot of hands-on experience, then that may be the way for you to go. The other option would be architect, um, where... It was kind of given that architects were people who were late later in their career. They were engineers and developers and security engineers, and they stepped into the architect position after many years of doing other things, more hands-on things. That's not the case today. Lots of people are taking uh, mentor training, very deep, intensive training, and stepping right into architect positions uh, without having to do a lot of engineering or even understanding a lot of engineering. Architect is a different skill set. Uh, you're a hybrid person. You're dealing with the business. You're dealing with the technology. And you're translating the business requirements into technology. Normally, you're a technology executive, and you have to play an executive role and deal with leadership and become a leader within the teams. Normally, you're leading development and architecture teams. In other words, you're leading engineers. And so it is a lot of responsibility, and also it takes a lot of knowledge. You have to have a wide understanding of different technologies and how they work and play well together, and the ability to have conversations with any number of people, any number of fields. You need to have a conversation with the security team, a conversation with the database team, conversation with the AI team, conversation with the infrastructure team, and understand what's being said. So it's obviously very challenging, um, but it's also a good career path as well. I, you know, I spent my time as an engineer. I spent my time as an architect. And I think the architecture positions are much more fun because you do have more control. It's more strategic. It Also, it pays better. They have a tendency to make uh, more money than engineers because there's fewer architects out there based on the experience that you need to become a good architect. Other emerging options would be user interface specialist, uh, ethics specialist. Certainly with AI, we're, we're, we're running into areas where we need these sorts of skills, compliance specialists, uh, cloud financial operations or FinOps. 
and there's many others, all kinds of niche uh, jobs that are starting to emerge and uh, certainly taking those positions and getting certification or getting skills in those positions or even pivoting in those positions from an engineering position is certainly going to be fine and fun. So keep in mind the different categories out there, what they are and which ones are most attractive to you and how much training and time it's going to take you to break into one category versus another. So the next step would be, how do you get the training you need? How do you get the skill set you need, the knowledge you need to uh, break into one of these jobs? And it's absolutely imperative that you do that. Uh, number one, I always hear, do you need a college degree to do this? N not really. Um, I have a college degree. Uh, lots of other people in this business have a college degree, but lots of people who don't have a college degree are doing just fine. Uh, sometimes uh, companies may require a college degree to get an interview, but many do not. And so if you don't have a college degree, it's perfectly okay for you to get the training that you need and step into a position. And I think companies are willing to make that happen. It's not as much of an imperative as it was just, you know, 10 years ago or five years ago even. So just kind of keep in mind that we're dealing with very ad hoc training now uh, and college degree in, uh, in, in many cases is going to be, is just, is going to be optional. Um, other things to figure out is, in other words, determine how you learn. Do you learn in classroom scenarios, on-demand scenarios where you're able to start and stop the training? Do you need interactive with other human beings? Do you need to ask questions uh, to another human being? All those things are pertinent in figuring out your learning path. Because we have a couple of options out there. We have online short-form training, which is most of the training that's out there. Certainly the certification training is like this, where you, you're watching a video, you're taking a quiz, you're answering some questions, but you're not doing deeper uh, kinds of lessons and how you build projects and write code, things like that. Uh, it's basically uh, common skill sets and teaching you the skills and evaluating how much you were able to understand and, and comprehend, which is how the certification goes. Most of the training is like that. Uh, certainly my training on LinkedIn Learning is short form training. Coursera, uh, Pluralsight, all the other training companies out there uh, do a good job in providing these videos. And if that's the way you want to consume training, that's certainly a good option. The other thing would be online long form training, where in other words, instead of just one hour, two hour uh, video courses, there's, you know, 20 hours of course that you go through. Uh, some of the certification training is like that as well. So in other words, we're going to get into a deep dive and becoming certified in AWS security or certified in uh, in Microsoft AI uh, AI technology or certified in Google infrastructure technology. And that's because there's so much that has to be learned and very detailed amount of things have to be learned. It takes longer to train you on that stuff. And I think those things are pertinent as well. They're a little bit more longer and you have to be committed to get through them. Uh, and they take a longer period of time. But normally you're not dealing with human beings. You are taking an electronic assessment survey, things like that, but you're not able to ask a lot of questions and have an interaction with an instructor. The other one would be long form training with and mentoring that kind of comes along that's bound to the training. And this is kind of what I'm doing with uh, Go Cloud Careers, where we're uh, providing mentoring along with uh, video training. So you can watch the videos, uh, but go to lessons and do projects and ask the instructor questions and things like that. And some people find that much more valuable. And certainly if you're going to do something like becoming an architect, where you do need a deeper understanding, you do need to ask questions and get into the uh, intrinsic in nature of this technology and how it works and how to be a leader and how to deal, interact with people and all those sorts of things. Those are going to be a little bit more valuable, but they're going to cost more as well. Uh, some of these things are free. Uh, the more you have to deal with a human being, the less it's automated, the more cost you're going to have to pay. Other options would be colleges. You can certainly go back to community college, uh, state and private colleges to do in-person training. They offer many cloud courses or even online training in college. I teach uh, online classes at LSU, for example, and that's an option for people who say are going to the college and gonna find it easier to take classes at the college using the same platform that the college uses already. And uh, that's going to be fine and dandy. They have a tendency to be a little behind the curve. Uh, so normally they're not providing state-of-the-art training because there's a lag in terms of their ability to get some of the basic understandings there. But they do provide the fundamentals uh, for cloud computing, cloud security, things like that just fine. Uh, normally, they are going to offer some certification training through some vendor, um, but it's just the same as going directly to the vendor as it is uh, going through the college. But in some cases, you may want to get college credits for it, and you can do it that way. So it depends on the path you want to take. Cloud-specific certifications are probably the easiest path out there because you're going to go through a 10-hour course, a 20-hour course. 
uh, take the exam and become certified in a particular silo technology. So, you know, AWS AI, uh, you know, AWS infrastructure management, AWS, you know, S3 management, storage management, um, you know, Microsoft uh, performance management and security management, all these sorts of things where you're getting a tactical certification around the utilization of a very specific technology. And that's going to provide you with a jumping on point to go into a job and work that job with a very siloed amount of knowledge. So if you're going to get into an engineering position, say, up working as a security engineer for uh, Microsoft Azure Shop, you know, that may be the way you go because they're willing to hire you based on the fact that you just have the certification. I know lots of people that had non-technical jobs. They were cops and teachers and things like that. They were able to get this certification. Uh, walk directly into a hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand dollar a year paying job, uh, doing a very specific thing after going through the course and getting the certifications. Um, so that's a path to use as well, and it's an easy way to break into the industry. Certainly, if you're looking to become an engineer, because people, companies in many instances are happy to hire you with that certification, regardless as to where you're coming from. But they know that you have a certain specific amount of knowledge that they need. But then you have to perform as an employee for the company to, to grow within the company. So keep that in mind. So next would be finding a job. Um, figure out what you want to do first. Don't, don't go and uh, start looking for a job and then trying to define what you want to do and, work, and who you want to work for, the type of company you want to work for, uh, whatever. We can certainly do a whole hour on this. But you know, very quickly, uh, you need to figure out whether you're working on site, a hybrid or remote environment. Obviously, that's going to be important. And you need to figure out how you're going to find the job. Do some networking. Uh, so reach out to your sphere of influence, uh, you know, fam friends and family, and you know, tell them you're looking for a cloud uh, cloud job after you've gone through the training. You have this training, uh, this experience. You're looking for your first job uh, in cloud computing. You let enough people know that. Chances are someone's going to have uh, know somebody who's going to be hiring, and they're going to give you your resume. And lots of people get jobs that way. Just just who you know. Also, social media, you know, link in through your social media network. Some people you may have never met in person, but maybe friends with you on or connections on LinkedIn or Twitter or, or Facebook. Uh, those are great places to start. Let enough people know that you're looking for a job. Try not to spam everybody. Don't don't write the don't write one email that goes out to everybody uh, asking for a position. So have it custom written for them and, and reaching, making sure you're reaching out to them in a meaningful way. The other thing would be meetups. Meetups.com has a number of, uh, cloud computing groups, uh, professionals that work in the area. Happy to have you show up. Normally these things are in the evening. Uh, so they're easy to get to for people who have a full-time job, make connections there, uh, you know, figure out, uh, you know, who's working where and who you want to work for. And, uh, just let enough people know that you, uh, are looking for a gig, and you'll find that uh, people will help you. They're they're more more than happy to help you if you ask nicely, and they view you as someone who's capable and competent. The other thing would be the online assets, which is uh, how a lot of other people find jobs. LinkedIn job market, excellent resource. Lots of jobs are posted there. They're very detailed in what they're paying and the requirements and who they are. Some of the requirements, uh, some of the job postings that I see are a little bit confusing. Sometimes they say we're looking for an architect and they define when it's an engineering job. It's all hands-on stuff. Are they looking for an engineer and they're actually defining an architect? Are they looking for AI capabilities or an AI architect, but they're looking for specific uh, skill sets and it's on a specific cloud provider, which means they're looking for an AI engineer. So be very careful. Learn how to read those positions. Also, try not to deal with recruiters. They have a tendency to waste your time, You know, take quizzes, things like that. Lots of organizations organizations out there just gather resumes. Uh, again, network, use uh, glassdoor.com to figure out who those companies are and stay away from them. So normally I find when there's smoke, there's fire, but there's lots of good positions out there, certainly consulting firms and major organizations around you, uh, always looking to hire good people. Entry-level people are certainly on the table. There's uh, probably uh, 10 job uh, open job requirements that I'm seeing out that are chasing one qualified candidate, whether it's an engineer or architect position. So it's definitely going to be a seller's market for now. And so take advantage of that. Other places would be indeed.com, dice.com, and there's many others. Do your homework, research the company. Don't take a job that is going to be with a company that's going to not be the best place to work. Um, obviously, it's flattering getting an offer from any company, and certainly if they're willing to pay you a good salary, you know, many people are going to take that job. But if the company is either going to burn you out, they're going to work you too many hours, they're going to make you travel too much, or that's not necessarily a great environment to work in, normally that's going to be known through uh, Glassdoor, other, 
you know, networking areas. And by the way, it's perfectly fine to reach out to people on LinkedIn and ask them what it's like to work for the company that you're considering working for. Uh, then if, again, if there's smoke, there's fire, you get enough uh, uh, negative uh, negative points of feedback. Normally, it's, it's a place you don't want to go to. And if you end up going there, you're probably going to leave soon. And so rather than waste your time and money in doing that, try to work for a company that's going to sustain, provide sustained employment for a long period of time and invest in you. And uh, it's going to be a good symbiotic relationship between the, you, the employer, pl- employee and then the employer. Keep that in mind. So the final step would be adjust and approve. So in other words, once you're working someplace, um, you know, figure out if this is right for you and whether or not you want to work in other positions. You're an engineer working with uh, a particular, you know, say an AI engineer on AWS on a particular product. Uh, do you want to transfer over and work on Microsoft security? Or do you want to work on AI systems on Microsoft or other other systems? Or do you want to transition to becoming an architect and therefore willing to go through the training and the, uh, uh, and the, the transformation in doing that? Um, so adjust always, that doesn't mean change jobs every couple of months, but uh, people are not going to be happy with you if you're doing that, but certainly improve your position. But it can be a continuous learner. You know, it, just the fact you're watching this video and stayed with me this long, you know, tells me a lot that you're willing to learn and invest the time in yourself and making it happen. So continue to learn, continue to read books, you know, all these sorts of things are going to be valuable. People view that as an incredibly positive thing. I always like hiring people and care less about their uh, educational background, but people who are willing to learn, people who are adaptable, people who are go-getters, things like that are going to be much more valuable to organizations. So adopt those attributes as quickly as you can, and you're going to find out the world's your oyster. Well, that's all I have for this week. Hope you enjoy the information and good luck finding that uh, that perfect job out there. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to check out my book, Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing. Don't forget my courses out on LinkedIn Learning. Got a bunch of them out there. Love to see you there. Also, don't forget about my new course, Generative AI Architect, that's out on Go Cloud Careers. You check that out at gocloudcareers.com. The link's down in the description. Also, check out my InfoWorld blog and uh, make sure to follow me on LinkedIn. So until next time, you guys stay very safe. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.